That's drunk. Just a warning that there's a lot of flashing lights in this video, so if you are sensitive to that, then please do not watch this video. Doing a video on a light gun game is a bit tricky for me because my setup for playing and recording is done mostly through an 8 inch professional viewing monitor. Yeah, technically light gun games do work, but it's a pain in the ass. So thanks to my friend Nate in Albuquerque for bailing me out on this one, we were able to play the Super Nintendo port of Konami's Lethal Enforcers on a regular old Sony Trinitron. And wait, this game doesn't work with the Super Scope? You can't even use the mouse either? Come on, really? Yup, that's right, Lethal Enforcers on Super Nintendo only work two ways, a regular controller, which is kinda lousy, or the Konami Justifier. The game came packaged with this blue revolver and it actually plugs into the second player port. It makes you keep the controller plugged into the first player port for some reason, and the second player Justifier was only available through mail order from Konami and it plugs into the bottom of the player one revolver. It's kinda goofy. What sucks is that you can either play this one with either two Justifier guns or two controllers. You can't do one gun in one controller so that sucks. Meanwhile, the Sega Genesis and Sega CD versions of the game do let you mix and match, just FYI. As far as the game itself, I mean, what you see is what you get here, and what you see is one of the most 90s games ever. Not just the graphic style, but the hair, the clothes, the settings, any way you slice it, it is just about impossible to separate Lethal Enforcers from its time, for better or for worse. There's five levels plus a training mode stage, and you can choose which order you'd like to play them in, and I'm always a fan of that because it allows you to see most of the game, even if you suck. The gameplay is extremely simple. You point, you shoot bad guys, and you don't shoot the hostages. To reload with the controller, you just press the Y button. To reload with the justifier, you just shoot off screen. You can also upgrade your weapon by shooting the gun icons as they appear throughout the game. And that's it. That's the whole game. You do have boss fights here, which are seriously just wars of attrition. You just fire at each other until one of you is dead. It's pretty ridiculous. Also, apparently it takes an army of like 100 people to rob a bank. Seriously, these idiots must be bumping into each other and tripping over the dead bodies behind the counter there. And what are these idiot hostages doing standing up like that in the middle of a gunfight? And what is this, a clown car? There's like two dozen people in there. Like I alluded to earlier, Lethal Enforcers also received ports on the Sega Genesis and Sega CD, and they're thankfully a bit more flexible in how you can play them. They also actually have blood when you shoot someone, imagine that. As you can see from the footage of the Super Nintendo Edition, there is zero blood in that version, but that's hardly a surprise. The Sega CD version of the game was the second game ever after Night Trap to receive an MA-17 rating, and the game was outright banned in Germany. The games are mostly the same as the SNES port, with the exception that the Sega games follow the arcade structure. There's no stage select screen. You play every level in order and each is followed by a bonus shooting gallery stage. One additional thing I want to point out about the Super Nintendo version of Lethal Enforcers is that the music here is really freaking good. Hey, it's an early 90s Konami game, back when they were great, and this soundtrack fits right alongside stuff like Sunset Riders and Sparkster. It's really well done. So yeah, Lethal Enforcers is fine for what it is, but you're better off with either the Genesis or Sega CD versions of the game. The thing is though, Lethal Enforcers was very obviously made for the arcades. It was made to be played in short bursts. Sure, the novelty of having a home console version was fun at the time, but now who cares? Especially when you can't mix and match the gun and the controller. That's the main reason why you'd want the Sega editions instead of this one. Taking it a step further, the best home console version of this is probably for PlayStation, if only because it's just easier to get the necessary peripherals for them. But even then, Lethal Enforcers is the kind of game you play for 10 minutes with a friend, have a laugh or two, and then put it away for like 2 or 3 years. The gameplay is just far too limited, and its charm only carries it. So so far. Alright, I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.